In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The theme of good works is one that we Lutherans often talk about, maybe even to excess. We talk about it so much because we think that so many get it wrong. It's a repeated refrain in our hymnody, in our liturgy, in our preaching, in our doctrine, that we are saved not by works. We often quote my confirmation verse, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Even the famous Lutheran chorale by Paul Sparatus of 10 stanzas, I won't read them all. Salvation unto us has come by God's free grace and favor. Good works cannot avert our doom. They help and save us never. And then later, it was a false misleading dream that God, his law, had given that sinners could themselves redeem and by their works gain heaven. So it is that God does not need your works to save you. He works everything needed for you and your salvation himself. That is, the Father gives up his Son unto death freely to you as a gift to save you. By Christ's shed blood and his blood alone are all your sins atoned. But your works do matter, and your works are needed. Your works matter, as we heard today from Jesus, because your neighbor needs them. Now, because you are saved by faith and not by your own doing, you are tempted then to think that works don't matter at all. But I read my confirmation verse 2, 8, and 9 from Ephesians. Here's how verse 10 goes. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand for us to walk in them. See, you don't have to invent them, you don't have to create them, and you aren't saved by them. And God has already prepared you for these good works, and he gives them to you to do. Your neighbor needs your love. He needs you to protect his body and life. He needs you to protect his marriage, and marriage for all. He needs you, your neighbor, to protect your, his, I should say, possessions and income. He needs you to protect his reputation, he needs you to encourage his wife and workers and children to stay and do their duty to him. He also needs you to maintain a place for, you, for him to hear God's word, to be convicted by the word of the law, and to receive forgiveness of sins in Christ and Christ alone. He needs you to call upon God's name for him, to watch over him, to care for him, and to redeem him. And he needs your confession of faith. Your neighbor, even here in the pew, needs to hear you confess God's holy name and to confess that there is only one true God whose name is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Your neighbor needs your works. But God does not need them. Again, God saves you fully or alone by his grace through Christ alone. Which means then, when Christ comes to judge the living and the dead, to judge you in the flesh, how is he going to judge you? So we might think that the last day is this courtroom scene, perhaps, where Jesus has his sheep and his goats, and then he parades before them their works and says, on the basis of your works, you're saved, and on the basis of your lack of good works, you're condemned. That's not what Jesus said today. Lord, when did we see you? Neither the sheep nor the goats actually recognized the works they had done for Jesus, that is, for the neighbor. The difference between the sheep and the goats is not the works. It's the faith in Jesus. He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. 
That means he's actually going to enact on the last day a verdict that's already been made. The judgment has already been rendered against sin, against death, against the devil. It's already accomplished. It is finished. You are forgiven, not guilty. Sheep, not on the basis of works. So he will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, that is given to you by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then Jesus describes the blessed as having performed many good works for their neighbor. Where did the works come from? Did the sheep produce them out of their own will or of their own strength? Were they even aware of the good works that they had performed? No. Lord, when did we see you? These sheep on our Lord's right hand, blessed by his Father, don't even know what they have done. The king himself will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers. That is, for one of the faithful, you did it to me. The king has to reveal their works to them. They were hidden by God even from their sight, lest they put their trust in their works, lest they have something to boast in. You see, you're not saved by your works, no matter how good they may be. No, you are saved and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. His blood creates in you new and clean hearts. And as you are redeemed by Christ Jesus, then he, he will perform works in you that are pleasing unto the Heavenly Father by his gift, by his spirit. It's not your effort. It's his. Prepared for you, a gift for you, from even before you were born. But I hear your argument. I know what's coming. <laughs> so I'll quote James. But someone will say, you have faith. And I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. So it, is, so it goes, some would think, that some are saved by faith in Christ, and others are saved by their good works. It's not true. It's not the point of today's lesson from Jesus. Acts of charity and mercy, if they are not done in faith in Jesus Christ, are never good works, no matter how good they look. They are always done according to the flesh, if they're done apart from faith. That is, with selfish ambitions to get into God's good graces by your own effort or strength. That's what distinguishes the sheep from the goats. Not the works themselves, but rather how they consider those works. Even so, the goats were shocked. They thought they had done quite well. Maybe you've donated extraordinary amounts of money to charity, or you've written a big check at the school auction, or you've donated to the Thanksgiving collection, or you're ready to put some special gift under the tree for a family in need at Christmas time, or taken the envelope and made up with a special gift for this year's deficit. All these things truly, according to the world standards, look good and are good by the world standard. But they're only good if they're done in faith in Jesus. If you think they're good in and of themselves, you're thinking like a goat, not believing like a sheep. Lord, look, I took care of you. I took care of all the things you wanted me to do. I took care of your children. I raised them right. I gave money to charities. I supported the church and the school. How is it that you can say to me that I did not minister to you? That's not in the parable either. They don't even recognize their works. Again, what is missing? Only this. Faith in Jesus Christ for your salvation. And salvation can only come by his word, which gives the spirit. And then by the spirit, which gives faith, that is trust in the merit of Jesus and his merit alone. Even if you tried to look to your acts of charity or your love of neighbor or your good works for your salvation, even on the last day, even if you thought they were enough, you won't believe they're enough. 
The only benefit that you can do by looking at your works, well, there's two possibilities. One is you can look to them for proof that faith is living. That's the way of James in his epistle. Or you could look at them and put your trust in them at the exclusion of Jesus Christ and him alone to boast in your works and thus forfeit your salvation. If any good is to be accomplished in you, you're not going to see it. Only on the last day when Christ reveals it to you. And it's only going to be a result of his tr trust. That is, trust in the good tree that is Jesus and the fruit that then he bears in you. So even if God does reveal to you in this life some good that he has accomplished in you for the sake of your neighbor, well then rejoice and give thanks to him, not to yourself. And if he doesn't reveal any good in you in this life, you can give thanks already because he will reveal it to you in the day of resurrection. As the final day comes and the Son of Man comes in his glory, don't fear. You are already judged. You are already saved. That judgment was rendered upon you when you were baptized. You are already the blessed of the Father. And you have been joined to his Son and are thus co-heirs with Christ of his kingdom, even now. You already have died and have risen with Christ, and thus eternal life is already yours now, even before you die and rise. And that life was prepared for you, even before you were born. The Lord is patient with you, wishing that none perish. He's patient with you. He preaches to you. He gives to you his gifts that you would repent and believe his gospel. O oh God, save me by your name. And that name is what has been already put upon you, that has marked you as one of God's children. Thus, God has promised that he will never abandon your soul to Hades, but he has already now redeemed you. And that everything needed to be worked in you or for you and for your salvation has already been done. Finished, he said at the cross. So how about today, we just take a break. We rest a bit, a bit. We take comfort knowing that salvation is ours. Not only for us, but for all those who have died in Christ. And then receive the peace that God only can give, which surpasses all understanding. May it guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.